Bowl halftime show when the very earth opened up and from below amorphic sea creatures holding musical instruments, nobody expected much. But in mere moments, the crowd would be entranced by the sounds of sweet victory. It was absolutely explosive. I mean, you could really feel the energy from the crowd just skyrocket. It was a blast and it wasn't expected. We were just blown away by how good they were. It may have been the greatest performance of all time. And nobody knew who they were. Everyone knows that performance, that perfection we all heard. But in the early days of the band, they were really a mess. They never even came up with a name. The band was made up of several unknown rookie musicians. But at the helm was lead vocalist, SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob was a relatively new artist, but he did have some experience. He mostly sang out of passion. So he never really went out of his way to get discovered. And you won't end up like the fool who ripped his pants. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. This kid could take almost anything in his environment and turn it into music. The best time to wear a striped sweater is all the time. And it was good music every time. He wasn't professionally trained. He was just naturally talented. He could do anything. Give him a song, and he could twist it into any style of music. Rusty Cray! If SpongeBob provided the heart and soul of the band, then the brain came from the band's manager, Squidward Tentacles. Squidward was a struggling musician, I think for his whole life. Uh, he was really, well, he, he never gave up. So I think that was his best quality as a musician. His thwarted ambitions led Squidward to a life filled with crushing cynicism. And then he got a phone call from a former classmate and self-proclaimed rival, Squilliam Fancysome. Squilliam at the time was filthy, stinking rich. He had everything Squidward wanted. An esteemed band, spotless reputation, and this gorgeous unibrow. Squilliam was a real piece of work. He knew Squidward didn't have a band. He just wanted to rub it in. So he called him and asked him to take his spot performing at the Bubble Bowl. He knew it would just humiliate him. Oh, I'm sure Squilliam was pretty pleased with himself. Hearing Squidward struggling on the phone like that? Bet he's not laughing now. Desperate to rise to the challenge, Squidward used the few connections he had to put together an unlikely group of potential musicians. Among them were Sheldon Plankton, Patrick Starr, Sandy Cheeks, Mrs. Puff, Eugene Krabs, and SpongeBob SquarePants himself. And just like that, they were on the road to the Bubble Bowl. I don't think there's anyone who's not a fan of these guys. But what people don't understand is that when they first started out, they were terrible. They had no rhythm. A lot of them had never played a musical instrument before, and they had no chemistry with each other. Anytime this group would get in a room together, it was madness. Yeah, there were too many big personalities. Who did these guys think they were? A bunch of amateurs acting like rock stars. I mean, Squidward, that guy had to have a whole lot of patience. Squidward was old school. He didn't even consider mayonnaise an instrument. That caused some tension. The direction the band was heading didn't look good. Their biggest obstacle was proving to be their lack of any musical talent whatsoever. You can never tell what's going to work and what isn't. It just turned out that, unfortunately, there just wasn't much of an appetite for ungodly, horrible music. It was just a style that didn't have much of a following, unlike today. The band was at a low point, but it was only getting lower until they finally reached an all-time low when a tragic accident shook the group to its core. You'd never find more beloved flag twirlers than Fred the Fish and uh, the, other, uh, the other flag twirler. 
The flag pillars were a couple of characters. They weren't the central focus. I guess you could say they weren't the main characters. They didn't have to be. It's dangerous, twirling. That's why most bands don't have flag twirlers. But Fred and... They both knew the risk. With the Bubble Bowl performance fast approaching, Squidward had begun to feel the pressure. In turn, he let that same pressure fall on the flag chorlers. And eager to meet their leader's expectations, the flag chorlers, the heart and soul and gills of the band, twirled their last flag. It was hard to keep going after that. Everyone was devastated. I'm sure Squidward somewhat blamed himself, but it wasn't his fault, really. He couldn't have known. Yeah, after that, they really tanked. I mean, I didn't think they could get any worse, but a couple of days later, everything just fell apart. On the night before the Bubble Bowl performance, tensions were high. The band hadn't improved since their first day of practice and time had all but run out. That would be all it would take for the band to turn on each other. It started with Harold. He provoked Eugene, made some comment about his big meaty claws. Then SpongeBob tried to intervene. His heart was in the right place, but he came off as a little bit preachy. Squidward had no chance of calming these guys down. Before he knew it, the whole band was in a full-on brawl. They were using the equipment as weapons. I heard SpongeBob was seen holding a dismembered arm. They were acting like animals. Watching his band descend into total chaos proved to be too much for Squidward. And at 10 p.m., he reached his own breaking point. He really laid into them. He scolded them. I think if Squidward had just been angry, the band would have just brushed it off. I mean, they were angry too. But it was the disappointment that really seemed to hit them. They let him down. He said, that's it. If you don't care about this, neither do I. Don't bother coming back tomorrow. He said he was going to tell everyone that they all died in a marching accident, right after the loss of their flag dwellers. It was a low blow, but Squidward was in a low place. They had been given four full days to simply become professional musicians, and they had squandered all of them. The band stared in disbelief as their fearless leader finally gave up on them, until one hopeful little sponge in square pants spoke up. Remember, SpongeBob had musical experience and he had the respect of the band. He was the next best thing to a leader, so I think it had to be him that would step up. What kind of monsters are we, he said. That poor creature came to us in his hour of need and we failed him. Hearing SpongeBob say that, that fired them up. It inspired them. They were like, maybe we can still do this. Uh, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall that night where they had that one last late night rehearsal. Nobody really knows what went down that night, but whatever happened, you could be darn sure that it was magical. <laughs> It was well after 10 p.m. when the band began their final practice, and they worked tirelessly through the night. Learning to be musicians essentially from scratch was a grueling process, and it was only a matter of hours before their time was up, and they were forced to work with whatever they had learned in that short time. The following morning, the entire band showed up bright and early at the annual Bubble Bowl for their debut performance. Squilliam was already rubbing it into Squidward's face, but when the band showed up, well, Squidward was more surprised than Squilliam. He had heard them the night before. They weren't even close to ready. I know Squidward was just like, what are you guys doing here? But the time to back out was behind them. And so the band of amateur musicians took center stage. Imagine being in that crowd, watching the game. It's halftime, Maroon 5. So humanoid sea creatures holding musical instruments. <laughs> I mean, yawn. But before you can get out of your seat, they start playing. And within a week, it had skyrocketed to the top of Bubble Bowl halftime show charts. I think it was such a success, because it really was the gold standard of music from then on, that the band kind of realized it's 
It's not going to get better than this. We are never going to beat this. The group never performed together again, but its legacy remains intact. Most of its members retired from the music industry. Those who continued never swam quite as high again. SpongeBob and Squidward reunited to create a clarinet ukulele duo. Uh, they eventually enlisted Plankton and Patrick to form a new band. SpongeBob and Eugene even released a single. They were all good, but they never came close to the magic of that sweet victory performance. It's not like they needed more success. Some bands get a taste of greatness, and they desire more because they're desperate to prove it's not a fluke. But not these guys, because they didn't get a taste of greatness. They achieved greatness. They redefined greatness. They set the new standard for greatness. That's what I say to people who call them a one-hit wonder. A one-hit wonder. It was the only hit they needed. Find me someone anywhere in the world who didn't love that performance. You can't. Its music head on the hearts of millions will last forever.